بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أبدا في الله تنتنون in our studying about a, a, a quick brief overview about Ramadan the rulings of fasting Ramadan so we mentioned uh, the last time that Ramadan is the month of forgiveness of the sins and it was reported on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى from the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام that he said Salawatul khams wal jumu'atu ila al jumu'ati wa ramadanu ila ramadan mukaffaratu ma baynahunna idha ijtanaba al kaba'ir in this hadith is an authentic hadith it is a hadith uh, narrated in Ahmed and, and Muslim and this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the five daily prayers from one Friday prayer to the next, and from one Ramadan to the next, all expiate the sins that are committed in between them, so long as one avoids the major sins. So that's a beautiful hadith. And in a first verse, because a lot of people have, they wonder about this hadith and, and other narrations where the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, the, the five daily prayers, so that means when you pray five times a day, and all of us pray, when they five days, daily prayers uh, that this is a forgiveness for the sins that you do in between them so whatever you committed between Asr and Maghrib if you prayed your prayer properly and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will be forgiven and whatever you and from Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah and from Ramadan to the next Ramadan it will expiate everything you did and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the last part of the hadith he said he said, if you stay away from the major sins. So that lets us know that that forgiveness is for the minor sins. All the minor sins you commit between two prayers are forgiven if you're, you're praying. If you're one of the people of Ahl Salat. And if you're one of the people who fast the month of Ramadan. Between Ramadan and Ramadan. They all, uh, that, that is a, a, a source of forgiveness. Except for the major sins. And there are many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which uh, show that and show the importance uh, and that, Ram and that uh, fasting, of course, forgives our sins. Uh, another important point with Ramadan, whoever pronounces jadatain offers the obligatory prayers, prays, pays zakat, fasts the month of Ramadan, is one of the truthful ones and one will be with the martyrs. Uh, is reported on the authority of Amr ibn Murra al-Juhani radiallahu ta'anu that he said a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said O Messenger of Allah what do you think if I bear witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that you are the Messenger of Allah perform the five daily prayers pay zakat fast the month of Ramadan and stand in prayer during its nights among which group will I be he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Min as Wa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Among the truthful ones and the martyrs. So it lets us know that fasting, and of course practicing the five pillars of Islam, that this right here is so great and we take it for granted, but that this is our, our path to forgiveness and Jannah. Uh, another important point with regards to Ramadan is that some of the actions that you should do, of course, all the ibadah that you should do, uh, study the Quran at all times and especially during Ramadan is reported in the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma, that he said the Prophet وسلم, was the most generous of people and he used to be more so in the month of Ramadan. When Jibreel visited him and Jibreel used to meet him on every night of Ramadan till the end of the month. The Prophet ﷺ used to recite the Qur'an to Jibreel and when Jibreel ﷺ met him, he used to be more generous than a fast wind which causes rain and welfare. This is an authentic hadith. So this shows us the importance of reading, reciting, and memorizing, and, and, and thinking and understanding the meaning, going through tafsir. We will do some tafsir this uh, Ramadan, the Idnillah, some short surahs and, and ayat that come up. Uh, another important uh, benefit of the holy month of Ramadan 
uh, the great reward for the one who provides food for the fasting person to break his fast. Very important. Feed the poor if you're able to, or feed uh, your neighbors, or you know whoever is fasting. Pay for someone or give them food, helping them break their fast. It was reported in the authority of Zayd ibn Khalid al Jahani, radiallahu ta'anu, that he said, The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, Whoever gave food to a fasting person with which to break his fast will have the same reward as him, though nothing will be deducted from the reward of the fasting person. So that's the ni'mah of Islam, is that Islam. There's so many different ways that you could gain reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when you're fasting. That's the whole thing. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een and the salaf of this ummah, they were excited about Ramadan. Not like us, we, ah, oh, Ramadan's coming again. Oh, I gotta do this. I get, you know, a lot of people are tired. They don't want to, they don't want to make the sacrifice. Other sacrifice, some people don't want to give up sins. They don't want to stop going to the club. They don't want to stop listening to music. They don't want to stop drinking. You know, because maybe they do do those things. Maybe they stop those things during Ramadan and they see the benefit. But they, you know, it takes sacrifice and it depends on the level of your heart and your iman. So, uh, it's very important to do good deeds and feed the poor if you can. And that goes to uh, the campaign that I am going to do, the video that I'm going to make about uh my trip to Ethiopia that I'm trying to raise a little money and it's going to be to feed the poor and it will be at the last part of Ramadan so we don't want to miss out on that reward. Another important point with regards to Ramadan is that you should strive to perform good deeds in the last 10 days of Ramadan. All throughout Ramadan but especially those last 10 days it was reported in the authority of Aisha ta'ala, that she said when the last 10 days of Ramadan began the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tighten the waistband of his mezza, meaning his, his waist sheet but in the meeting and used to pray all the night and used to keep his family awake for the prayers. This is an authentic hadith. So showing us the importance of Qiyam al layl trying to get Layl al Qadr be awake, be in ibadah, supplicating to Allah Make it tova to Allah, seeking forgiveness from Allah, and all the other acts of Ibad and asking Him for everything that you need. It's reported in the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala that she said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to exert himself during the last 10 days of Ramadan more than he exerted himself at any other time. This is an authentic hadith. So, very important the last 10 days of Ramadan and those nights to be vigilant in your Ibadah, striving to do any good deeds from the small things to the great uh, acts of ibadah and kindness. Uh, another important point with uh, Ramadan is that, uh, you know, it was legislated and it came in stages, like everything. The Quran was revealed in stages. Ramadan, all these acts of ibadah, they came in stages. And there's hikmah from that, you know, to strengthen the people's iman, that they didn't just all of a sudden they came into Islam from Kufr and they had all these actions of ibadah to do. No, because the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, they had different, they were different people and they had different experiences and different types of jahiliyyah. And some of them, some of them, some of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in used to drink alcohol, not just in jahiliyyah, but even in Islam, even for their time in Islam. There were certain Sahabi uh, that they were, they, you know, used to get lashed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because you know, they didn't stop. You know, they kept drinking. They kept getting drunk. But they loved Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they just had this, this problem, this crutch. So, it shows us our weakness and our frailties. We should strive to get over, of course, those sins and understand that everyone's level of Iman is different and their and Iman, it, the development of our Iman is in stages. It's not at one time. It's reported in the authority of Mu'adh ibn Jawa radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said, Prayer passed through three stages, and fasting also passed through three stages. And regarding fasting, he said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast three days in each month. And he would also fast Ashura. Then Allah the Most High revealed, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladheena min qablakum ila qawlihi ta'ala ta'amun miskeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayat uh, where he said, observing fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, uh, up to the words where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, to feed a miskeen for every day. 
the month of uh, in another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa taala says the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, up to his words, uh, and fast must be made up from other days. Hence, the fast was prescribed for those, for the one who was present in the month of Ramadan, and the traveler was required to atone for them, feeding uh, the poor. And it was prescribed for the old man and the woman who were only able to fast with difficulty. This hadith is raised to the level of Sahih by other supporting narrations. And those are just some of the benefits, and we'll talk about uh, others in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.